Well, we've got a fireside chat between uh, Matthew Chandy, Managing Director, and Euroflex yes. and Naval Ahuja, co-founder Exchange for Media, where they'll discuss how Euroflex has built its product line through the power of influence. But before we uh, get on to introducing our speaker, I'd like to show some of the campaigns done by him and his team. So could we move on to displaying the campaigns first? Hey guys, welcome to my space. A space where I spend most of my quality time. Be it spending some time with myself, be it reading, or just chilling with my pets. I like to live out of the box. It couldn't get cozier with a nice and comfortable mattress. And that's why today I'm switching to Duroflex Live-In, a hassle-free, easy way to live in. Let's unbox this baby together. Okay. Thank you. Look, I won't give you a speech. I'll just talk about the benefits of it. Are you watching this? Duroflex's mattress. My back is perfect support. The fun thing is that no one doesn't recommend it in the market. He was talking about the store. Why do you have to buy branded? It's all the same. I'll give you a gift. It'll be cheap. My question is about my back. I don't think this is the same. और मेरे बैग को चाहिए साइंटिफिकली इंजीनियर्ड मैट्रेस इंजीनियर हूँ ना पहचान गए इसके फाइव जोन ऑर्थोपेडिक लेयर मेरे बॉडी के प्रोशेड पॉइंट्स को सही हिसाब से एडजस्ट करता है और ये सीधा फैक्ट्री से सैनिटाइज होके आता है सो एक्स्ट्रा स्लीप विद एक्स्ट्रा सेफ्टी एंड द बेस्ट पार्ट इज इट इज रिकमेंडेड बाई नेशनल हेल्थ अकेडमी दो की टॉप टिप देता हूँ जैसे साल बदला है ना अपनी सोच भी बदल डालू Ladies and gentlemen, some brilliant campaigns right there. I'd like to now introduce to you our speaker, Matthew. So Matthew is a law graduate from the prestigious National Law School. He comes with a professional experience across diverse industries, including law, banking in various international markets, and an entrepreneurial stint in the restaurant business. He's also a member of the Young Presidents Organization. Uh, with this, I'd now like to humbly welcome Matthew, as well as Novel on your stage and screen. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for giving us your valuable time. Let's have Thank a you. Nice Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bhavna. Uh, welcome, uh, Matthew, uh, for uh, to the last session of our Influencer Marketing Conference. It's been a very interesting day of learnings for us. Uh, this is not the last session in some ways of the evening. We have the awards that follow this session. But before that, let me dive straight in and ask you a few things that you've been doing. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, Euroflex as a brand has, you know, done so many things. It's, it's really progressed a lot. I remember meeting you in 2019 at our Bangalore uh, uh, edition of the Pitch CMO Summit. In just two years, the Euroflex has come a very long way. We can, you know, have a two-hour chat about what, what you've done as a business and marketing. But because today's uh, focus is influencer marketing, we'll, we'll stick to that topic. I was uh, reading, a, before I go there, you know, I just wanted to contextualize it and tell you, we, we curated a report today with uh, Group M and their influencer marketing agency, which is Inca, about what's happening in the influencer marketing uh, domain. And some very interesting things came out. One of which, of course, is the size of the industry. Outside of media spend, the influencer marketing business itself is likely to touch 2,500 crores in the next three to four years. Now, that's a sizable number, given that, you know, this was a domain three years, four years back, uh, which was considered as a niche, right? So that's the direction it is headed. Uh, it is likely to touch, uh, you know, media spends on outdoor very soon. So huge. 100% of the marketers who were studied for the survey ranked influencer campaigns as a top priority for this year and beyond. Every other leader indicated a budget growth of more than 25% this year. So that's the kind of interest uh, level that this area commands. Uh, naturally, there is a lot of numbers 
that follow all of this in trust 400 million users are on social media 70% almost more than two thirds follow at least one influencer so there you have it uh, the reason brands are chasing it uh, and there are other reasons too the scale and size of uh, what's happening in terms of influencer marketers following has gone up significantly a couple of sessions back we had some of the key influencers on the panel and you saw some of them have 7 8 million following billions of views uh, so th those numbers are really growing at a very fast pace and i i've seen you you've done uh, very interesting work in this domain uh, as well matthew why don't you tell us what made you take to you know using influencer marketers uh, and influencer marketing uh, some of the things you've done, I noticed you you created something very interesting and, you know, mattress as a category can be very boring, but you made it very exciting because it is health, it is sleep. And what better uh, than this pandemic, unfortunately, to tell us the value of good sleep, good health and, you know, healthy life. So tell us what uh, made you take to influencer marketing and how did you sort of uh, uh, dive into it? Yeah, thanks, uh, Navas. Firstly, uh, thanks for having me again. And uh, I do, I do recall that uh, that chat we had two years ago very fondly. In fact, uh, I think one of the things I shared with you is that um, it was almost embarrassing to be in our industry. Like you said, it's a, it was a boring, sleepy industry. And uh, I think one of the benefits of being in a slightly sleepy industry is that you have a chance to have some fun. Um, Pre-pandemic. We were probably a little traditional with uh, the way we did things. And I think the pandemic actually gave us a chance to, to, to really play and have some fun and take some risk because anyway, things were so scary. So uh, as a marketer, we could actually take some risk. You know, our stores were closed, uh, traditional, nobody was watching TV, uh, films were not coming out. So we had a real chance to, to do something different so I think uh, while it's a cliche that the pandemic actually brings out huge opportunities, really it did bring out an opportunity for us to, to have some fun, to, to play uh, with our marketing. In fact, to not market too hard. Mm. Like you said, one of the first things we did was that we realized that people were so concerned about their health and about comorbidities. And having done many years of research into, into sleep, what we realized that was that sleep was one of the best immunity boosters you could ever give yourself. So rather than try to sell a mattress, we went to, to digital channels and we talked about sleep, the importance of sleep, how sleep is free. Um, we found some great partners to carry the story for us. Uh, the, most, the most fun one I did was a, a chat with uh, Luke Coutinho. Uh, we had uh, Milan Soman carry the message. So I think while we always believed so much that great sleep uh, and a great mattress was crucial to great health, I think the pandemic gave us a chance to talk about it. Uh, and we found people were listening, listening much more than they ever did. Um, and I think we also got a chance to celebrate the home. I think people were locked up at home, not able to go out and very soon realized that uh, home was actually a very special place or should be should be a very special place for everyone. So uh, we did a lot of stuff about staying at home, having fun at home, uh, all the fun things you can do on your mattress uh, beyond just sleeping. Um, so I think the pandemic brought everybody back to ground zero. Uh, we couldn't do any Big Bang um, brand ambassador campaigns. ATL was not looking as exciting as it did in previous years. So we we were forced to really try and use influencers and i think there's no turning back it was one of the best things that could have happened to us uh, and it's it's not just that the marketing became so much more meaningful and interactive but i think very positive impact on business as well so business while while the brand has grown very strong you know business couldn't be better uh, as we speak so uh, fantastic I, I think I think the pandemic was a was a vaccine for us and and not a virus really. I I, I was saying very interesting choice of uh, you know the narrative you've created very important for a brand, uh, you know not talk about you know how comfortable your mattress is or you know highlight the aspects of the product but tell people why sleep is important and you know I saw 
somewhere you spoke about how the journey was very interesting first you spoke about like you said sleeping for immunity then uh, you started talking about how uh, it was important during the pandemic for people to stay in and since people were spending now significantly higher time at home naturally having a uh, good quality comfort in the form of a mattress that you're sleeping in becomes doubly important and then you 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 got you know sessions you conducted with some influencers like yasmin karachiwala aisha bilimoria vandana gupta you know that told people the value of staying fit so it's 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 not one or two things you've done you've done things across the board you know you crafted a narrative so you're not you've not dipped your feet into it but you've really gone gone into it with a lot of thought behind it yeah I, like i say double i think once once we tasted how meaningful influencer marketing was i think there was no going back um yeah we we actually stumbled on the the kind of fitness at home kind of campaigns and and then we actually found that we were doing all of this with our teams um so we said why not why not do something on on youtube with it with on on instagram with it and we just found there was so much great traction for staying fit staying healthy staying safe uh having fun boosting your immunity in the process yeah so yeah like you said we did immerse ourselves i don't think we're ever getting out of it um it was the best thing that could have happened to us yes and and then to graduate the whole thing into you know talking about sleep therapy you know connected with yoga nidra and you know everything else it's 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 amazing how you take as as i said at the beginning a boring product or a boring category and uh, you know when you look at the health and wellness space it is so big and so fashionable and so contemporary today everybody you know uh, wants to be in that space wants to learn more about it so the connect is so beautifully done let me come to you know another part uh, you you've said uh, in a in a few interviews about how you're looking to scale up your business from a 500 crore company you want to go to 2000 in a few years time and how naturally marketing and brand plays a very important part of that uh, you know aspect so what are your priorities going forward you know uh, so i was talking to you uh, matthew about how uh, you've in the past spoken about uh, expanding the duro duroflex brand taking it to you know more parts of the country and how marketing branding plays a very critical part in that journey going forward how do you see that that panning out obviously influencer marketing is only one leg on which it will stand what are the other areas where you uh, are looking to expand your you know marketing efforts significantly yeah sure i mean i'll i'll uh, i'll also stay on influencer for the time being actually one thing very powerful we found with influencer marketing is that um, you can do very micro targeting with uh, influencers so um, one of my favorite campaigns maybe because it was not a campaign uh, was sounds of sleep where we you know we hand picked six of the 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 best and uh, most sentimental lullabies from you know different corners of india and these were all regional lullabies right so we had one in marathi one in bengali uh, hindi punjabi tamil telugu um so what we found was you know if you wanted to to get engagement if you wanted to have people you know engage with your brand uh, understand think a little bit about sleep and sleep hygiene um you could do that beautifully through influencer campaigns by by choosing very strong regional influencers and you know it's been an amazing experience working with uh, marathi influencers like i said um um influencers from orissa uh from assam uh, so part of our strategy uh, in going national also involved finding some of the most uh, influential local influencers because you know they they are every bit as powerful as the kind of national absolutely uh, influencers so that's that's been a wonderful uh, journey and of course uh, right now you probably know we're supplementing that with uh, you know really big brand ambassador like alia but uh, she's popular everywhere she's popular for so many things but mostly because she's so fearless and she is young and dynamic and just represents uh, new india which is which is what we want to be so um, i think we are using regional local influencers well as part of our national expansion 
but of course, supplementing that with with the national celebrity like Alia. Uh, but it's quite interesting that we don't just do a kind of TV campaign with with someone like Alia, but we we splice and dice uh, a lot of the collateral and the media the way you would with uh, social media marketing. So we have different formats for YouTube, right. for, for Instagram, for different occasions. Uh, so I think a lot of our best learnings from influencer marketing, we're also using with our, our national brand campaign. Um, and it's, I mean, it's, I, I couldn't have asked for a better result, actually. It's going, it's going really well, so. Fantastic, yes, I was, I was going to talk, talk about the, you know, uh, Sounds of Sleep, uh initiative a little later but since uh, since we are already talking tell us uh, how did it deliver for you because the idea it is fantastic i have some numbers you know the digital series you did in march of 2021 garnered 23 million youtube views in just less than three months and this is not an idea that you do you know one-off uh, because you know you can't you can continue this in so many formats and it kind of starts building uh, we know that a lot of social media audio also audio based media has been used uh, you know for uh, you know lots of things when it comes to sleep meditation yoga for children lullabies and you know things like those so how has this idea worked for you and how do you look to build upon it yeah now I'll, um, I'll maybe rewind as to why we why we first thought of it actually we a lot of us in the office just love music so we're big fans of of coke studio uh, we were very inspired by what they did. And uh, I think a lot of us are also sleep evangelists and we use sleep music to fall asleep, literally. I use, I use sleep music almost every day. I find I get much better deep sleep when I use good soothing music as opposed to some very loud uh, thriller to fall asleep. So that's, that's actually where it started out. And then we realized that um, some of the most sleep deprived people in the world are young parents, both young dads and young moms, because I mean, I'm sure we all know why they're so sleep deprived. And we're like, look, why don't we just put together a bunch of old sentimental favorite lullabies, which remind us of our times with our parents and our grandparents um, and try to build in some education around sleep routines, around lullabies, around deep connection with our children. Uh, and that's where the idea was born. Um, of course, we had some amazing, uh, strong partnerships, for example, with, uh, with Sony Music and with YouTube, uh, who helped us to, to, promote, um, to promote this property. Uh, and like you said, you know, Sounds of Sleep, uh, we can do a million things with Sounds of Sleep, for example, you know, we talk about 23 million YouTube views, but we, we don't even know how many more times it's been streamed on Spotify and on YouTube music. Yes. So, so uh, its reach is, is almost unmeasurable, but it's, it's huge. Um, it's, also, it's also got no time limitation, right? It's gonna be, these are beautiful songs which will be heard time and again and again. And we actually wanted to create something which is really lasting and enduring and uh, uh, for sure sounds of sleep will come back in in many different avatars uh, hopefully for many many years um, because there's no limit there's no limit to what you can do with with something like uh, yes so and so, one of the one interesting of the i think aspects of uh, you know an initiative like sounds of sleep and when you talk about engaging with regional influencers is also what's happened in the last two years especially during the pandemic a uh, couple of key trends again you know the report talks about it which is which is you know uh, region based influencers they have really taken off you know as opposed to say 3 years back when or 2 years back when you, youtube had 200 uh, only 200 influencers with uh, at least a million plus uh, subscriber base that number runs into thousands and the growth has come from you know, languages, growth has come from smaller cities and towns. So that area has really expanded. So the, a pyramid has actually become a plateau at the top, which is a fantastic thing for the industry and for brands as well in terms of the engagement that you're looking to do. And the other part is how uh, you are able to curate content and engage in the local language, because that is very important. Eventually, India's language is India is not English. India is not only Hindi. India is these you know beautiful 50 60 main languages and for brands to be able to connect with 
uh, audience or consumers in their own uh, native languages is a very very important step in 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 the journey of uh, influencer marketing absolutely so you know i think video vernacular and voice are things which which are here to stay and uh, it's worked really well for us i think it's working really well for a lot of brands who embrace it genuinely um so while we talk about the 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 campaign you know what we can also say is that actually our sales from the smaller towns uh, has grown considerably because of the power of these influencers and the use of vernacular so we are selling in you know very very small towns towns that okay. i actually didn't even know existed uh, but it, it's you know that's the power of this digital media now it's it's reached everywhere i think the pandemic has also meant that a lot of people who work in big cities have now gone back to their small towns um and uh sp- helping to spread the word so uh yeah you know embracing vernacular and video in the vernacular has been has been a a big learning for us uh, through these influencer campaigns it's very interesting that as a business business leader you talk about how you know this your sales needle has moved as a result of you know using uh, digital media especially influencer marketing this music to ears and uh, to the I, uh, to music no, to the I, ears I, of the I, people I, in the industry they they would love this they'd like to record this uh, you know uh, the the para and you know play it all over again and again I, because i have the benefit of of not being a professional marketer and therefore that's right yes for us finally everything has to result in in uh, you know a healthier business uh, for us and we've always seen marketing as a way to connect with customers and of course uh, finally get sales and transactions and relationships and it's it's happening yes and uh, you know there are there is no dearth of brands who look at the top of the funnel but then eventually struggle to figure out what to do about the bottom of the funnel so top of the funnel being creating awareness and consideration but when it comes to driving advocacy and conversion a lot of brands eventually end up struggling and you know they they only bother about the top of the funnel so i think i think now i think that's that's maybe the other thing we did uh, we focused a lot on recently was that we used to be very retail focused maybe very one three years four years back uh, majority of our business was from traditional offline retail and in excess of 35% now is coming from digital channels in fact we think about 80% of all our business originates somewhere online and then it may transact offline but but even even completion and conversion 35% is happening online so while it was important to do all of these campaigns and create awareness and consideration i think it was equally important to create all of the the mechanics to actually complete the transaction so we we, we really revamped our, our website we became very strong on the marketplaces with uh, flipkart and amazon and pepper fry um our distribution networks uh, became much stronger and of course um we also launched products which were very easy to distribute in a lockdown sort of scenario right so i, th- I think uh, bhavna played some of our uh, bed in a box videos you know that's a that's a simple very good but a very simple product which can be delivered to your doorstep and you can install it yourself in fact unboxing and installing it is great fun and our customers did some of our marketing by putting up videos of their unboxing so i think it was a mix of marketing but also a lot of product development to suit this very very uh, strange lockdown sort of scenario which we had yes. uh, as well as creating very strong channels to complete transactions on digital and digital distribution as well so i think mix of everything uh, has has uh, led to good results interesting and you know if i may expand this conversations to now what you're doing uh, with alia bhart and how that works out for you and there's a very thin line between you know uh, or or a very gray area between what you call an influencer and a celebrity endorsement i think uh, i think one of the difference is the amount of money you have to pay to the celebrity endorsement i can't think of any other you know differentiation but it's very interesting how you moved from utilizing influencers in the last 2 years for specific campaigns now you have a you know sort of big brand celebrity who is perhaps taking uh, helping you take the brand to even larger number of masses and you ride on her image to do 
massive campaign. So tell us what is your thinking behind getting somebody like Alia Bhatt on board? How does she kind of fit into the brand philosophy? And how does that dovetail into what you're doing uh, in the influencer marketing space already? Sure. So um, I think that the thinking is was reasonably clear that um, like we said, a mattress is a bit of a sleepy category. And in India, in fact, worldwide, but in India in particular, sleep was not taken so seriously, even though it is, it is the third pillar or the foundation of great health, right? So um, when you have that kind of issue where you have a high touch product, but maybe low engagement, we actually needed the, um, we needed the power of a national celebrity, somebody who has a lot of credibility uh, to help us carry the message. And I think Alia Bhatt was a, you know, you know, she was a perfect candidate for that. She's young, she's dynamic, uh, she, she's so intelligent, um, and she's so disciplined about her health and, uh, and her sleep. So while she, she, she's a lot of fun, she's, she can also carry a, an important health message around sleep exceptionally well. So what we were looking to do was to really raise the tempo um, about all the conversations that people are having around sleep, around health, around the importance of buying a good mattress, which gives you good back support, which keeps you cool, um, and which helps you get that you know deep sleep and the REM sleep that you need. So while influencers were very important and, and helped us on our journey, there was also a stage where we felt uh, we would love to reach even more people. Um, so influencers reach is very good and all added up was giving us tremendous reach. But I think at some stage, uh, we also felt we needed a national national face, um, a national message. Uh, we've opened up great uh, experience centers in Delhi, uh, in Jaipur, in Chandigarh, uh, in Calcutta. Uh, Bombay, all, all over. And we, we did feel that we, we wanted a strong, young, dynamic, fearless person like Alia to help carry this message of great sleep to the masses as well. So I think it was uh, very important to do. I, I wouldn't say it ever replaced our influencer campaigns. I think it supplemented what we're doing with influencers. Um, influencers certainly still have their space and always will have their space because of the ability to do something quickly, to do something micro, um, to do, uh, you know, I think influencers have a much stronger connect with their audience. Yeah, so we talked about a fitness, fitness influencer or a lifestyle influencer or a sleep influencer. Um, they have a much stronger connect with their immediate audience, but I think the brand ambassador gives you a much wider reach with much larger audiences. So I think both have their place as, yeah, I think I think marketers will need to, to be able to use both at the right time and for, for different Yes, things. that's true. Uh, <clears throat> let me ask you a little bit about, you know, this uh, uh, new uh, native digital startup you've done, which is called Sleepyhead. What's yeah. the kind of philosophy behind it and what are you looking to do with that? Uh, Slipiad is another, you know, big success that we're really proud of. Um, Slipiad started just three years ago. Um, it has grown tremendously. It's, you know, almost more than doubled its sales uh, every year. Is now actually twenty percent of our total total business. So it's grown very fast. Uh, it's a very different brand. Euroflex is a is a niche brand. Um, it's a brand based on, you know, rooted in in science and medicine and talks to a evolved audience, maybe 30 to 30 to 50 years old. Uh, Sleepyhead is a younger, more quirky brand. I think a brand which has, uh, has no rules. It calls itself the easy peasy mattress. It comes, uh, you know, it comes cutely packed in a box. It comes home. Um, the campaigns are, are you know, really irreverent. I think my favorite campaign was uh, Eat, Sleep, Binge, Repeat by the uh, Jordanians. Um, Sleepyhead has been working quite closely with, you know, and repeatedly with the Danish set because his his vibe is the Sleepyhead vibe. I think all the Sleepyheads 
really vibe with someone like Danish Seth and the Jot Indians and things like that. So it was uh, it was for a younger audience, uh, a younger customer um, between actually eighteen to thirty five, just coming into the the workforce, uh, starting to do up their homes. Uh, so Sleepy had filled a filled a different target group. Uh, the branding, the marketing, the product is is all completely different from what Dior did. So I think we have two brands. They play in in quite different spaces, uh, and frankly, both learn from each other. Sleepyhead has its own energy and momentum. Dior has its own energy and momentum, and uh, we learn from each other. Sleepyhead was a digital native brand, so it learned how to do e-commerce. And need to see much before Duraflex did, uh, and and Duraflex learned a lot from that. So, it's a it's a startup in a, in a legacy business, and uh, I think Duraflex learns a lot from Sleepyhead and vice versa. Fantastic, very important, especially for a legacy business to learn from digital. And if you're going to integrate both of these, uh, nothing like it. Uh, last two questions before we go, uh, Matthew, uh, you have done a lot of work in the influencer space last two years for those of us uh, who are listening what are your sort of uh, key learnings especially areas to avoid mistakes you made because when you've done work you make a lot of mistakes and you learn from them and improve upon what you do what are the mistakes you think uh, brands sometimes make pitfalls they should avoid when they are you know uh, doing influencer marketing because one of the very natural temptation is let's chase you know, numbers, get me an influencer who has 10 million following, right? Without bothering about brand fit, whether the positioning is right, whether it lets you conversion. What are the other similar kind of learnings you had having done influencer marketing now? Uh, I, I think the first mistake which you could make is to uh, try to avoid making mistakes. I think, I think the best thing is to start doing influencer marketing and learn a little through your mistakes because the beauty of influencer marketing is that it's not that expensive and your mistakes are not that costly. So you can quickly learn. I think it's much easier to learn from some mistakes in your campaign than to hear something from me and, and change yeah. your plan accordingly. So I think the first thing I would say is just, just, you know, start, start doing some influencer campaigns. Um, the second thing would be, um, like you said, find an influencer who actually resonates with your product and brand and nat ha has a natural fit. And so um, when we talked about the fitness influencers, you know, we were really trying to carry a message of health, fitness and immunity. And therefore we chose fitness influencers who, who could carry that message. So I think if the influencer has a good fit with your community and the kind of message you're trying to carry and has some genuine love for your brand, I think then the, the influencer campaigns work out much better. I was listening to some of your panelists just before that and they all said, you know, my favorite campaigns were the campaigns that I did for products that I loved. So um, if you can find an influencer who genuinely loves your product or your message, I think that's the best thing you could do. So, you know, engaging with Luke, about the importance of sleep, you know, it was just completely natural for him because he talks yeah. about it every day and he lives and breathes it every day. And therefore, evangelizing sleep through Luke was the most natural thing that we could have done. So, um, yeah, and I think I, I think with influencer campaigns, you can't go too wrong. If you go wrong, you can change it very quickly. So I would. Uh, I, I think the, the mistake would be to not stop and think about what went wrong or right with your campaign, because the beauty of these campaigns is that you do them, you can do them so fast, so quickly and so often. You can't go too wrong, but but it's worth always stopping to see whether you met your objectives. You know, are you trying to get reach? Were you trying to get, uh, you know, cost per views down? Were you trying to get conversion? And and doing a debrief and a deep analysis of the data surrounding your campaign, I think that is important. Um, can you go very wrong? I don't know. Don't think so. Don't think so. I think you Fair can, enough. but 
but but but yes the mistakes worth making absolutely i mean you unless you try you won't make mistakes last question where do you see the set how do you... uh, that said sorry i, I should have mentioned um, if you try to sell too hard i think you can go wrong i think uh, especially if you're doing an integration into a program i mean we did some good integrations with with tv serials but the selling was very subtle uh, and 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 under the sheets if 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 i could use a pun but i think uh, if the if the selling is too hard i think it sometimes doesn't work that's right it defeats the idea of doing influencer marketing then you might as well make a pvc and run it with a big star with that thank you so much matthew uh, thanks for your time i'm told uh, the award ceremony is about to start any time uh, pleasure talking to you thanks for taking time out and on my uh, next visit to Bang- bangalore i look forward to meeting you again and thanks for sharing your insights uh, on what duroflex is doing in influencer marketing thank you and back to you bhavna Thanks so much Naval catch up soon thank, thank you thank you so much Matthew thank you so much Naval thank you for joining thanks so much